My name is Art Boer. I run a company called New Music Labs, and we develop creative concepts for the music industry. And one of them is Gig Locker, and that's probably what we're going to talk about in the next question. So uh, that's me. Gig Locker is your personal scrapbook to uh, keep track of all the concerts you've seen, because I have my own personal problem that I didn't know which gigs I've seen in the last years, and I went to quite some. And uh, every time friends ask me about it, I don't really have an answer, especially after festivals and stuff, when you see lots, lots of bands play, and in the week after that you want to talk to people about that, that's sometimes pretty hard. And uh, for me, uh, Gig Locker is the solution to that, so I can keep track of the gigs I've seen very easily, and also I can add photographs, uh, photos, uh, ratings, reviews, stuff like that, and also I can see where my friends have been, so it's a social tool to keep track of all your gigs. Well, there are many apps out there to discover gigs and to find bands that play in your town, and they're pretty awesome, but uh, what they don't do is help me keep track of what I do. It's not a diary, and that's what guy, uh, Gig Locker is about. It's about uh, keeping track of the, of the gigs you've been to. Not, uh, it's not about so much about finding gigs you want to go to, but it's more about uh, having your own ego document where you can say, well, I saw Prince play in the small uh, venue of, uh, in Amsterdam, and it was 10 years ago. And we will, of course, see on Gig Locker that about 30,000 people would have done that. So that's probably... Uh, <laughs> Not true. <laughs> but, you know, it's, 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 uh, interesting gigs is also about who you are. And, uh, and this way you can easily keep track of that. Gig Locker is built to function around the world, everywhere you are, and it's uh, targeted at people who visit gigs regularly uh, or visit festivals regularly. So it's like the hardcore uh, concert visitor. It's not the people who go see their favorite band once or twice a year. It's about people who go see artists like once or twice a month. I don't know in money wise what it will cost. I'm a very small, I run a very small company, so don't ha I don't have the power to tell a lot of people about this tool. Yeah. So currently I'm very busy uh, finding partners who can help me do that. And one partner is the Dutch national radio station 3FM. And I'm talking to several brands who are interested in uh, talking to their customers and say, hey, I've got a, a product which fits this audience and we want to give them Gig Locker. So, uh, uh, and they can tell them about their product. And that's the way we are thinking of kickstarting this. I think as soon as we, we've, uh, we've made a deal with a brand, and it, it seems like we have one right now, I think in, in six to nine months, we will sure know if this is a tool that um, uh, many people will, will use, or if it turns out that it's not so useful. But the last thing I don't think will happen, but you never know. The, the money is also in the partnership with brands, so we're looking for a media partnership, which is currently 3FM, and we're looking for a brand who will endorse us, so we provide that, ba that brand with a, with a cool tool for their, uh, for their customers to keep track of the gigs they've seen, and the brand will pay us uh, for that, so they can have a brand activation tool, and all brands these days are looking for this brand activation stuff, so I think Gig Locker is an excellent tool for that. The second step would be is that we gather so much information about which people visit which gigs and we can relate that to each other. So we see hey, people who like Foo Fighters are also very interested in this new small upcoming band. So perhaps record labels will want to know about it or festival organizers or somebody else in the music industry. And without doing anything with privacy rules, because we can say people who like Foo Fighters also like these in this band. Or, and you can correlate uh, stuff of that, which is very funny and very useful, I think. The biggest challenge is to make this, uh, in terms of, uh, of interaction, as easy as possible. Because if you are at a concert, you don't want to play around with your iPhone too much, because I hate it also when people around me do that. So our goal is to make an application where in 30 seconds you're done. So you open up the uh, application, it suggests you, hey, you're probably at this venue looking at this gig, gig, is that correct? And you say, yes, I'm there. And then you can add a picture, a rating, and a review, that's it. And then you're done. And then you should put your iPhone away or your Android away and then just enjoy the concert. We're not at 30 seconds right now, that's one. The other one is that 
there's always an internet connection challenge because if you're in this dark, deep place in the club, probably you don't have uh, a connection to your provider. But sometimes there's wireless out there. But the the thing I think is that that uh, in, in in the long run, every venue will supply internet connection to everybody who's there. So probably it's not now, but it's in two or three years. There'll probably be a, a Wi-Fi connection for everybody, or there will be a decent connection to your uh, phone provider. So I think that's something that will be tackled soon. While on festivals, it's always very hard to get yourself some internet, but <laughs> I hope that that that'll be tackled because the application needs the internet. So, uh -huh. but the thing we did to tackle that issue is that it's perfectly fine for you to lock gigs you've been last weekend. So if you ha haven't had any internet connection at the Lowlands Festival and you're uh, it's Monday and you're at your desk in the office and it's really easy to lock all the gigs you've seen that right there with the, with a decent internet connection. If you start a new concept, the there's, there's, there's like 10% you know of what you're going to do and 90% of stuff you don't know about and you will find out once you start. So, uh, yeah, you should plan your uh, your project, but when it's a new project and when it's uh, uh, something new that's not yet out there and it's, when it has to do with software development, be sure it takes you at least twice the time you think it will take you, but probably way longer. <laughs> that's fine, but realize that if you start with this because it might get very frustrating. There's no music in the application, so there's no rights stuff. Although it's very easy to go to Spotify and listen to bands you lock or to iTunes and to download the track, so that's fine. But that's not uh, a legal issue for us. Um, uh, and there's not, I don't have to get permission from the venues or anybody else to say that a gig is happening. And that's all very relaxing for us. So all the content in there is free, open content, and uh, people can use that whatever way they like. And uh, if you, if this, we've also built iPhone apps with music in it, and the recorded music industry feels a lot different about that stuff. Yeah. All venues and festivals are very open. Please take my schedule because it makes people easier to find our gigs. So <laughs> go do whatever you want with it. That's something a recording industry could learn about. If it was easier to 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 develop on both platforms, both relative uh, on the iOS and Android platforms, that would help. Um, and if there was a way that it made it easier for us to get in touch with brands and tell us about what we have, you know, that that would help too. Because the thing is, when I tell people about GitLocker, they like the idea and they're willing to think about it and say how it could uh, be good for their business or anything. So. You know, sometimes I wish I had a room with 15 brands in it and then could get one minute with every brand and then if they all 15 could say, well, I don't like it, well, that's fine because then I know I'm done in 15 minutes without <laughs> e emailing people and getting the train and go to their headquarters and then talk to somebody who hasn't really any rights to decide about it. And, you know, you know all, the whole struggle. But, um, yeah, because maybe, maybe it is out there and then somebody should tell me. But I don't know of a place close in the Netherlands or in Europe where I should can go and I could get five minutes with every major brand. People enjoy music more than ever, in my opinion. So, and, and there are some parts of the music industry that struggle with that since they have this, they are built on an old business model, it's all old stuff. And, but I think also with things like Spotify and iTunes, it'll work out, you know, you and I, we will get to listen to the music we want to listen to one way or another. So that's fine. And we will get to get to the gigs we want to go to. Yeah. So, the, well, the only, probably the only thing is that nowadays it's really hard for bands to tour and stuff because there's this, there, in the live industry, there are lots of bands who just barely can finance their tour and there are these few bands who really make a really lot of money on touring and in between there's nothing. Mm -hmm. So perhaps we should find a way to to solve that in a way, but that's not... It's not my mission. I have really no idea how to do that, so probably somebody else knows.